to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Flashback Friday. These are the episodes where I go back and find some of the ones that I really know at the time made a big impact on me and on you because I heard from you and you told me so, and I think are worth a re-listen, or if you're new, maybe you might not have found this one yet. So today's flashback episode is um, episode number 314 with Kristen Thomas of Studio Thomas. Kristen impressed me so much in this conversation that when it came time to invite designers to speak at Luann Live, I, you know, she was on my short list. She was part of the Where Are They Now segments, if you were with us for Luann Live. And in all of my interactions with Kristen, I'm always impressed by her authenticity. You'll hear it in this episode. She wears her heart on her sleeve, and you see and feel how she feels so strongly and deeply about her journey and the struggles that she's faced along the way. One of Kristen's goals has always been to be true to herself, and that's something that she has worked hard to do within the creation of her business, and that is a challenge. We all know that, right? Kristen is the very definition of self-made. When she launched her business, she went all in, both feet first, and used her determination to fuel the business every step of the way. If you are feeling that fear of failure, if you are dabbling with design on the side but aren't quite ready to dive in, there is an important lesson in this episode with Kristen. At some point, we all have to decide when the time is right to launch our business. And yes, we may have responsibilities, families, and other things to consider. But like Kristen, ultimately, you have to bet on yourself. For her, as you will hear, failure was not an option, and it paid off big time. Within just four years of launching, she had a 10-person team and a thriving firm. At the time of this interview, Kristen has also just made a big shift in her business. Listen to it, okay? One that I think is important to hear about, and one which offers even more lessons that are valuable to designers at any level, seasoned all the way to C-suite, right? So before we dive in, I'd like to take a moment to thank our show sponsor, My Doma Studio. My Doma Studio is the platform, the very best platform for you to efficiently manage your projects. If you feeling like you've got that like hamster on a wheel feeling with your projects, take a look at My Doma Studio. This is where you can put everything in one spot so you don't have that scattered feeling. Okay, your communication your mood boards, your packages that you sell, your invoicing, all of the things you can do right there at My Doma Studio. Check it out at mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. Okay, let's take a look back and hear what Kristen has to say about gaining clarity on yourself and your business, about self-discovery, and the shift that changed her firm for the good. Hey, Kristen, thank you so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hey, Luann, how are you? So I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> me too. We have been talking with each other on Instagram for I, weeks or months now, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> I think it's been months, exactly. Well, I've been, a, I've definitely been a fan of yours for a very long time. Yes, so I mean, I- Very, very grateful to be on your show. Thank you. And I have noticed that and I appreciate and value your support. And of course, you know, I what was it like, I don't know, two weeks ago, finally, I'm like, why are we doing this? Why don't we talk in real life on the show, right? (laughs) Oh, I know. You're so sweet. I know. Yes. And that I just, yeah, again, I just, I'm super grateful. So I'm just glad that we can talk and, and, uh, 
you know, get to know one another more. So. Exactly. And so uh, the thing is that I was a, uh, was impressed by you and your body of work and your website and all the things that are my initial criteria for the invite, okay? Um, but now we've just had a little bit of off-air discussion, and I am even more super excited to have some conversation with you on the show because you are doing some things in your business, Kristen, that are just so f- truly – foundational to running a good business and the, some of the things that you have just shared with me and I'm really excited to pull them out of you again now for all of our colleagues listening. The first thing is that look I said in the introduction how you had an early career in real estate and that you you know, started this firm in 2013. The thing is there's a couple of things on face value that are just so um uh, just in my face, you have a staff of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people plus yourself. And who knows? I mean, and I, I know your husband works for you with you too. He, so, he does. Right. Yes, so that's eight people plus yourself. And maybe there's others since then, but this is a pretty big firm in just five years. And so that tells me that you're, you know, a smart business lady first, right? Oh, uh, you're sweet. You're very, very sweet. Yeah. I, uh, we have it. We have, I think there's 10 people total on our oh. team. So the thing that I'm curious about is many designers have said to me in the beginning of starting their company, it was do every job that comes along, take every project that comes along. And a lot of really huge, well-established firms have said this. But the funny thing is, it seems like it takes longer than four or five years to get out of that phase. But I think it seems illogical to me that you would be in that phase with a firm this large. So talk to me. Did you have a period that you would say, yes, I agree we were that way? Or did you just pop out like fully formed as this fa- fabulous designer that had her things all in a row? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I can't say that at all. I um, So Luann, when I first started in design, I, I did it. Um, for the mere fact that, um, you know, I needed to earn a living for my family. Um, when my kids were, when my kids were younger, they used to come to design school with me. I mean, mm-hmm. my kids have lived in, you know, Aiden Braith, you know, they, they've been through this with me. And so when I first started, um, I was, you know, I was an assistant and then I thought, you know what, if I'm going to do this for, for a living, I need to get to school and I need to do this because I had done real estate in the past, but I obviously was veering towards the design, um, of, you know, what I loved. So I started going to school and I had my kids at the same time and I was working, um, as a, uh, as an assistant and we had some long, those were long days. Those were long mm. days and long years. And I, um, not, I don't want to get emotional, but, um, oh. I, I fought hard. Mm. Yeah, I did. I, I, uh, I fought really hard. And, um, so I, um, those are just, I think you do, you get to this point where you're putting yourself out there and, um, you have to fight and, um, and so I, I did that for a while, and then my husband um, and I was with it. I was with another gal for a while, and I wanted to. Um, I actually wanted to have more kids, but I wasn't able to have any more children. And so I um, decided that um, I was just going to bet on myself, and I was going to take the leap, and I was going to do it. And my husband actually did it at the same time, which I don't know that I would recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> because the stress level is extremely high. So that we both took that leap about about four four years ago. And um and it was a pure um I guess it was just a faith thing. I don't know. I mean we just were like we have to believe in ourselves and work hard. And for me there was no option of failure. That this wasn't even an option because for me I I was gonna work so hard and treat everybody so good and um, get my reputation where I felt like it was strong enough that I could ride on that reputation and continue to push forward and just get better and better and better jobs. Mm. Cause I don't, I don't have a, you know, I wasn't raised with money. I, you know, I grew up, yeah, no average. I know I, you know, I've heard some of the, um, some of your guests in the past, they grew up, you know, knowing what nice things are right. and they grew up, all of those kind of things. Right. And I, I, I didn't, I mean, my, my whole 
schooling on knowing what's what's nice and beautiful and those kind of things is I have lived in these people's homes. I know what looks good and I go to their home when they've, you know, when they've done it, you know, 10 years ago and I look and I'm like, the pieces that you spent the money on that the really good classical pieces, we'll go ahead and we'll keep these, mm. but everything else we've got to scrap or, you know, cause you didn't, you know, and that's part of my philosophy and we can get down that, you know, down mm-hmm. the road. But, mm-hmm. um, so, so to go back to your story, you know, I, I worked really, really hard and, you know, I started with paint consults, <laughs> you okay. know, I used to go to people's houses and that's really, I just, I did so much grinding. It's just, that's, and slowly I was able to, um, build a portfolio for myself. I work really well with, um, investors. Cause like I said, my background is in real estate. So I definitely have that business side in me where I'm looking at the real estate in the way of, you know, maybe a developer would look at it, not just necessarily like, you know, the paint colors and things like that. I, mm-hmm. I'm really concerned with infusing value in the home. Um, and that's one of my things I tell my clients all the time, if we're doing a full blown construction project, I really want to see what the values are in the home. I don't want to over improve your home, but I definitely don't want to under improve it. Okay. Okay. I want to ask so, you a couple questions about all of that. The yeah. first is when you say that your husband left four years ago with you, is that when he joined the firm also, or he took his, he did his own thing then and he so, recently joined the firm? What's that about? That was, that was a great question. Um, he actually left, he was in law school. Or he okay, so he went to law school and then he was working as an attorney, and he left to flip houses. Okay. okay. So he actually he actually owns a franchise. We buy ugly houses. Oh. And okay. He, so he we are not Chip and Joanna Gaines at all by any means. <laughs> like not even. There's so worse funny. things to be right. <laughs> no, they're they're fantastic. It's funny because people people know that I am a designer and they know he they just assume home, but, yeah yeah but we don't. We don't necessarily work together per se. I mean, he kind of has packages that he already does. And, you know, he's definitely at a different level um, of work than, than what we're, than what we're doing, you know? Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm, yeah. um, but okay. yeah, so he's okay. Still so then you, so he kind of decided thing. to do that. Okay. All right. And then the other thing that I want to go back there is, is that I don't want to go running by the huge emotional moment that you had there. And I, you know, and not to, you know, do anything other than to make sure that, you know, when you look at Studio Thomas, when you look at your Instagram, when you look at your website and you are a designer that maybe is in business one or two years, or maybe you're a designer that's in business seven, eight or 10 or 15 years, and you're not doing that type of work. It doesn't look like that. It's very easy to be down on yourself and to think, oh my goodness, what am I doing wrong? How do I get there? Why don't I know how to do that? And it's to hear how hard it was for you. See, that doesn't come through on Instagram, right? We don't have pictures of, you know, Kristen that does eight hours at the design firm that she works at. And then she takes two kids and she hits her design classes at the university. And then on the way home, you know, they run through the shop, right? To try and get some, you know, food to cook and everybody's in bed at 1030 at night. Like, I mean, we don't see that part. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I, Often designers will describe it, but when you described it and it hits you in the gut like that, that's a very visceral memory for you. That's a very real memory for you of how hard you work to get where you are. And I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And now, now I'm even getting more emotional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has been. A, it's definitely been a. It's definitely been a push. I, yeah. But I think it's. It's one of those things that, like I said, I mean, failure was not an option for me Mm -hmm. and I had to push hard, push, Mm -hmm. push hard and you're grinding every day Mm -hmm. and you're just pounding it and you're, you just have to believe in yourself, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, there is something to be said for that level of failure not being an option. I mean, I I mean, seriously, there is something to be said and, and I I would, you know, consider it a little co- comparison to us at window works and that in the sense that we were always in business together and that meant that our entire house 
and our family depended on the business surviving, as opposed to somebody who maybe their husband is an interior designer and they're a realtor or they're an interior designer and their husband's an accountant. It's not about how much the other person makes. It's just that if your business goes under, it's going to affect your family, but your Mm -hmm. family's not going to not have a paycheck that week. But like for window works, when we were new and beginning, if we didn't make money, we didn't make money. (laughs) Like like that was it. Like there was no like, Hey, well, at least we got her salary coming in or his salary. And so I'm hearing that in you as well. You're both going out on your own and failure not being an option is definitely a driver in building a business. And thankfully, look, I I don't want every person out there to ever be in that position where, you know, and I, I also know that you don't have to be in that position in order to be successful, but there is something to (laughs) not, not making it, not being an option. (laughs) you don't, you don't. You for for because when I started my business, I remember telling my husband. I just said, I- "I'm gonna bet on me because I know how hard I can work. Yes, I will. I will bet on me. Yes, that's nice. I like that. And that so, belief in yourself is very good. Yeah. So 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 now to. take us through this transition a little bit. What's interesting is like I started the show by saying, you know, you only open in 2013, and here you are with a 10 member staff. That's a that's a big growth. And I can see, look, I admit, you know, we're talking 10 minutes. You're clearly determined and you're clearly a clear thinker. You know what I mean? And so the thing is, but, but we'll walk us through it though. Tell us how yeah. you do this and how you grow this so quickly. Yeah. I, so gosh, you know, so when I first started out, I, um, you know, I had, you know, a, an assistant here or there, or they were part-time and then I needed some help and those kind of things. And then, um, as you know, the work continued to, to come in, then I would hire, you know, more people. And, and when I first started, I would hire people, you know, based on their credentials and based on like how they can design and like things like that. But I, um, and, um, but one thing I will say, Leon, and this is what I, I think makes our firm. And, and I know that we have such a great energy in this firm and I truly, truly believe that this is why we are growing at the the rate we are is we our energy here is awesome and mm. it's all so for me when I hire somebody I hire very 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 slow mm-hmm. extremely slow and I want to get to know who that person is and I will I will put them on a temporary basis Mm -hmm. and I got to see if they if they work with the culture of our company and Mm -hmm. if they're respectful and if they are um gonna not be catty and like any of those kind of things because like I said when I first started I had experienced a little bit of that and I'm like I don't want that that's not that's not the kind of company I want to grow um and so it's a legit concern it's a legit concern it really is it really is and I I think for me my goal as a business owner is I want to have a company that people love to come to. Mm -hmm. Like I want them to come here. I want them to enjoy their job. And I want, when, when we're going around and we're looking at things, I want everyone to feel like everybody's voice is valid. There's Mm -hmm. no hierarchy here. Let's everyone, you know, is deserving of, of what they think looks good and things like that. And I, and I, I really feel strongly that that's, that's really, really helped our business grow. So, and, and to answer your question, so it's gone with more of a gut thing, I would say, than more of a systematical thing. Um, so for me, you know, you hire one person and then there, and I mean, the gal that who's been with me the longest, Robin McCarley, she's been with me almost since the get-go. I mean, she started off helping me doing like Facebook ads and things like that. And now I look at her, I'm... Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna get <laughs> um, but it's it's mm. so cool <laughs> to see people and oh gosh um <laughs> it's so cool to see people um just grow yeah. yeah and um that is my I would say that's definitely a focus um where <laughs> the, why I've grown I'm so sorry I don't mean to get emotional it's okay for me, it is all about empowering people and empowering our team. And I introduce our, our firm as our team. And when we get a client, 
they love everybody on our team. Mm -hmm. And when they come in, everybody comes around and everybody's hugging everyone else. I mean, it is just the way we do business here. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is in, in, in creating that team and in creating that environment for yourselves, which also extends obviously to your clients as well, it is in there that it, that you are slow to hire. In other words, you. what is your process to make sure? What do you do? Do you have several interviews? Do you have a period where, you, you know, you'll say to them, they'll work for you? Because I know exactly what you're saying. Like at WindowWorks, mm -hmm. I know the, 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 I can identify in these last 35 years in business, every single hire that wasn't, that didn't work out, I know for a fact that I ignored an instinct on that process, yes. on that hire. I know I did. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, yes. that they really would would fit this bill because of this skill set or this. It's always had to do with a skill set or a, a way, you know, that, um, you know, the, where they lived and they could get to the showroom at a certain time. Something that ultimately is not important that exactly right and so with maturity i learned to hire for culture and personality yep. and work ethic and what my husband calls a motor does like because i all i do all the hiring and i do all the interviewing and he always says to me do they have a motor that's what he wants to know yep. do are they uh, somebody that looks around and has the personality so the thing is i learned that you know you're in business five years i i tell you what it took me more than five years to learn that so what's your process and how do you do that because there's people out there saying i want to come company like that. I want my team to be empowered like that. I mm -hmm. want it to be a great culture. So give them some tips on doing that, Kristen. So I, I think, I mean, like I said, I mean, you hire, you hire slow, but as I, I really feel that if, if somebody really feels that you truly care about them, they will, they care just as much about you. Right. So for me, it's like bringing people in and I want to make them feel incredible and they believe in themselves and when the more they believe in themselves the more they believe in our company the more they believe in our team and i really truly believe that if you can get them on board you don't have to push them because mm -hmm. they already believe in it and they want to be successful they want to be part of a successful team mm -hmm. so you start them off slow um, and then like for me, I would be like, oh, you can work, you know, two days next week or whatever the case is, you mm -hmm. know, that's how I started everyone. And the more I would see their work ethic and the more I would see them interact with clients, then I'd be like, oh yeah, maybe come back for three or four days or, you know, that kind of a thing. And then, and then as time went on, then the next thing I know they're full time. And then the next thing I know we're bringing somebody else on and it's all about the culture. It's like, are they going to connect with us? Right. Right. Yes, you know, because you got to have a team that is has chemistry. You have to because you're here. It's the worst thing on the planet when it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, and and your and your your clients can feel it. Yes. Your clients know. I mean, and my whole goal is, if if our if a client calls us, I want them to know they can talk to anybody on our team because everybody on our team loves them. You right, know, we right, right, we care right. about them. We right. want them to be taken care of. So no matter who they call, they're going to be taken care of. Um, and so I think that you grow that culture. I, I know when I, I never planned on being a leader, I never planned on being a boss. Never, ever. I never thought, cause I was going to be an interior designer, right? I just thought that's what I was going to do. <laughs> and the more people we started getting on our team, I'm like, you know what? I got to learn how to be a leader. That's right. I got to learn how to be an owner and I got to learn how to, to make these people like, I just, I mean, I, I obviously appreciate them so much because I mean, not, I don't want to get emotional, but I, <laughs> I just, I just appreciate them. Just, yeah, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate them. You know it's what horrible. I mean? It's just, I just, I just, uh, you know. Are they all I like looking at you right now going, come on, you know, snap out of it. <laughs> I, know, I'm just, I, I think what it is, is I think it's like, because when you're starting, you have this dream, you mm. know, you have this big dream, this lofty dream of where you want to, where you want to go. And then you get past that point of, okay, I'm a designer. Okay. Somebody's paying me to design their, their, you know, their home and this, that or whatever. 
And then you have people that believe in you and mm -hmm. they are willing to, they believe in what um, the direction you're going to take the company and they have all the confidence in the world that you're going to lead that ship and you're going to make it right. And they're ready to support you. Yeah. Well, and, you certainly are a leader. There's no question. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Thank you. I, I, I think for me, I, I, I would say that's probably my, so that's how I feel that our company has grown. I, 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 it's all about the energy. Our clients feel it. And I mean, we don't, we don't do a lot of advertising. You know, the majority of all of our clients are all based on referrals and they all, you know, they love us to death and we, we become very close to our clients. I mean, we, um, they're, they're our gold, you know, okay. we love them to death. Very good. So. I love it. I love it. So tell me a little bit about you, just this past January did a complete overhaul, revamp, something very dramatic in your company. Tell us what you did and then we'll talk about why you did it. Yeah. Okay. So I, so in January, yeah, we were just, you know, we were kind of going through the motions and those kind of things. And then, um, I just, again, I'm like, this isn't, this is not who we are. I don't want to do this. I want to, put out there and I want to be who I want to be. Right. Cause I've, I'd gotten past the point of like, okay, I don't think we're going to fail. I think we're going to be okay. You know? Okay. So for me, I was like, I am going to establish who we are as a company. I'm going to establish a brand. I'm going to establish our aesthetic and we will, the, cause the projects that we were working on that I knew that of the aesthetic and direction we were going, that was the continued direction that I wanted to head. And I knew that I didn't want to be everything to everyone. I didn't want to be. So I, so what I did, so I had this, I felt like I was this gerbil or this hamster on this wheel. And I was trying to be everything to everyone. I was trying to know um, what was going on in a home that was more of a Mediterranean feel. And I was trying to figure out what was going on here where everything was super modern. And I realized I cannot be everything to everyone. I can't. And so I read, I came across a book I read, it's called the essentialism. And, you know, he just talks over and over again in regards to making, what is your highest contribution that you can make? And I knew that for, for me and for our team, if we could really put our energy behind our clients that have, you know, that really have that intentional living philosophy and all of those kind of things, we will continue to bring those clients in and we will continue to get that kind of work. And that's what has 100% happened. I mean, we've, whatever we've put out there, intentions and in, in, um, you know, any of, you know, talking with people and in our Instagram and in our portfolio and everything, that's what's come back to us tenfold. Okay. And so basically, this is something that has been repeated by many people on the podcast. You're, you're saying it differently, but it really boils down to, look, Fred Byrne says it, you know, decide mm -hmm. what your only is, decide what your you is, and then put it out there, attract it to you. Nancy Ganskoffer says, your business in words, decide who you are. So it, the message came to you a different way. And that's one of the things, you know, I always say it on the show, you can hear the exact same thing from five different people. And then all of a sudden, the sixth person just hits it to you in a way and it opens your brain up. So exactly. What, right. So what you're saying, what you heard was, is that, okay, I am one day trying to be the best designer for this client over here who has a Mediterranean home. And in order mm -hmm. to really do justice to that home, I've got to, you know, maybe look up Mediterranean homes and I got to do some research on it, or I have to think mm -hmm. out of the box, or I have to have some conversations. And then the next day I'm going over and I'm doing this modern house and la la la. And you're just reading this thing and it's saying to you, what do you want to do? What can you do best? And and where and where do you find your your best value? Mm -hmm. Where do you see that? And mm -hmm. and I I know that and for me it was like getting very very confident in our aesthetic and getting very confident in our philosophy and why we do things a certain way. Right. And, and then what happens is in you you are you get to a point and you got to that point where you just were okay to walk away from the things that didn't line up with that. And, and that's, and that's scary. Yes, it's it very is. scary. It's very scary as a business owner. Mm -hmm. And it's very scary when you have, 
you know, employees looking at you going, mm -hmm. okay, I hope we're going to be able to get some work coming in because mm -hmm. you're going to do this. And mm -hmm. even when, when I, uh, you know, I'm, I don't care. I'm scrapping it. I'm literally starting. Yeah. I mean, everybody's eyes like, like, I can't. I'm like, well, I'm confident in who we are. And yeah. That's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And so and you. It's, it's been, been awesome. Yeah. So you had, so now what happens? Now the phone rings and somebody is on the line and you have an intake form and their project isn't the kind of project you want to do. You have this come to Jesus moment. You're a little afraid. And the first time it, you say you're no. You're scared. It, you're scared. Yeah, you're scared. And I think it's and when you get somebody that calls you, it has to do with, um, you know, do they, do they respond? Is a professional, like all, all those kind of things, how's their project, all those kind of things, and you want to work with them. And if they, if you want to go and connect with them and really get them from point A to point B, those are the kind of projects we want to work on. I mean, we really want to connect with the client, and then we want to tell them and teach them how we see them and their lifestyle and those kind of things. And if that's the case, then we will take them on. But as far as the aesthetic or maybe it's not really our vibe, then no, we will, we'll, we'll say, you know what? I don't think we are the best fit. Mm -hmm, I don't think mm -hmm. we are the best fit. Because the thing is what scary. you're expressing is, is that you were working when you said you felt like a hamster in the hamster wheel. What you're, what you're saying is, is that when you were constantly working outside of your strength and outside of where you really wanted to be, it was work. It was yeah. work as opposed mm -hmm. to now when you work with the clients who have the same vision and in the types of projects that are, are your aesthetic, it's not work. Well, I mean, it is work, but you know, it's, no, it's happy it's, work. It's, it's not, I mean, I always compare it. It's like a tug of war. Like if you have a client that doesn't think or, you know, the same kind of things that you're thinking, it, you literally feel like you're going back and forth like a tug of war, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and it, and it just, it's not flowing well. And so it's, it's not, it's not fun for them. It's not fun for you. Mm -hmm. And it's, you don't want to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, you want to, um, like I said, I mean, you want it, you want your highest contribution and you want to be the very, very best at mm -hmm. what you do. Mm -hmm. because, and so give us you know, a little bit of, is it in the beginning, is it one or two times that you have to turn away a paying job that doesn't line up? Is it five times? When When is the point where when you turn it away, you're not completely freaked out? You're just like, that's not our job. It's going to go, you know, thank you so much. Let me refer you to somebody else. Is it? Does it take you t two times, five times, 10 times before you, because I know it at window works now. I'm happy to do it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm asking you like, go back and you, you only started doing it six months ago. <laughs> you know I know. I was going to so, say, I don't know that I'm completely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I got to be totally honest. Well, I want you. you to be, that's a yeah, point. I yes. Don't. I don't know if you ever have that. I don't know if you ever. Or no, you, you will. Have you will have it. And... No, you will have it. You will get to a place where it's okay. But maybe oh, you're. Yeah, yeah you Probably. will. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but no. I, you will. I know you will. <laughs> I, you know, we'll ha I'll have somebody call and they'll say, I need you to hurry and put this house together right away. And and I will I will be like, I'm sorry. I there's that's not how our process works. We can't do that. <laughs> right. And, you know you're scared because you you're hoping that things will come down the road, but you just have to, you have to do that because you can't jump. If somebody says jump, you just, you really have to run your business. You can't let it run you. Mm -hmm. You really can't. Mm -hmm. And I have so, a practical question. So this big staff of 10, did, did, mm -hmm. you, did this a lot, summer or any of this growth happen in the last, uh, you know, three months since you've made this decision? I called it five or six, but it's three as we're talking right now. Um, um so, or d d were, how many, like, because it's what is it? <laughs> so, uh, so to, to be completely to be completely honest with you, Leanne, last in I I have a picture with me and Robin and Maddie, who she ended up having to move to Texas. That was in August, and then I had Joy was part time and Kayleen was part time. So we had a total of four of us just six months ago. Wow. See. Okay. Okay. See. Yeah. So that's good. So that's good in two two reasons. The first is that. 
there's four of you when you decide to make this change. So there's risk, of course. There's risk if you mm-hmm. have one employee, okay? But yeah. so the thing is that for somebody that is thinking, you know, it's time for me to put the stake in the stand. It's, it's time for me to decide and create my vision for my company and for me to be true to the type of work and the type of clients and the type of firm that I'm going to be, okay? And so that's scary. You look around, you're like, okay, I've got three employees. I've got four employees. That's scary. You did it anyway. And and now only two or three months later, you have six more employees. That's insane. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. what I'm saying, how I, I think once you decide what you're going to do. Talk it, my language it's now. Just gonna decide. Happen. It's just going to happen. Yep. You yeah. just have to decide. And yeah. it's scary. But I, I, I think once you do, I mean, things will just continue to, to come your way. Mm-hmm. And uh you know, and just, so it's yeah. getting clear. The first thing is to get clear and take an assessment of who you are, what you bu- you want your business to look like, and the way and the type of the projects and the clients that you want to have. And then the other thing that you did that was really, really very bold move is that you have sixteen thousand followers on Instagram. First of all, that you grew that in five years is insan- insanity to me. Um, and so hats off to you. But also in January, you completely wiped out your Instagram feed and you completely. erased all the, that's in, in, <laughs> Yeah, we did completely. I, I just went on and I just said, we're starting over. We're starting fresh and everything was wiped out. And I remember just thinking, nope, that's not, that's not us. I'm, I'm done. And we're, we're starting over. And I got back on and I, you know, I, I was very particular, you know, what kind of photographer I was going to have and what I wanted, the certain look and the certain aesthetic and over and over and over again and what I wanted, you know, our feed to read and all of those things. I mean, I've put a lot of time and energy into that and a lot of thought behind it because I know where I want us to go and I didn't want it to be an afterthought because I, for me, it was building that foundation because I know where we're going to go. Yeah, this is, it's remarkable, the feed now. It's absolutely gorgeous. You mix in, you know, what I like is where, like, for instance, there's a pair of shoes here. So on one hand, it's like, what the heck is that about, right? But then what you do is you say, when we begin a project for our clients, we love to find out where they shop. If you're curious what style you are, go to take take a peek inside your closet. You know what I mean? Like you, you relate it back to the design, which is interesting. Is all the work on the feed your work now or is it, no, here's. It's it's a mix and match. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely a mix and match. If I'm inspired by it, then I will put it on it. But I, um, and now that we've just hired an architect, so I will start pulling in more architectural as well. But um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's definitely a, a good mix, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm inspired by some of it. Um, a lot of it's ours. Um, it's just, it's a mix for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I think that is the, that's probably the boldest thing that I've heard. Not that the, all of the other stuff is really bold, but see, I've lived through a lot of the other stuff. So not to minimize it, but I know that you'll get through it. That's the thing. Like, yeah. whereas if you ever said to me, well, I've got 16,000 followers on Instagram, I know it would be the right thing to do, but I would be with you going, well, are we really going to delete this whole thing? I know. <laughs> right. Cause then you end up, people wonder, are you legit? Like what's going on? on, right? Well, not only like, that, no, like, yeah, exactly. Not only that, but you know, you had 16,000 followers for a reason, you know? Uh-huh. And so you start to look and go, well, they liked what I was doing. And now if I change my mind, they're not going to like it, but this wraps right back around. It doesn't matter when you get to a point where you know, for you, what is, it's like, okay, if I start and I have only, if, you know, 15,482 of them leave. What am I going to do? Because they're not my people anymore. Right. And that's okay. And that's okay. I mean, and we've done it with our entire firm. I've gone through all of our fabrics. We've gone through all of our books because we have really formed almost a branding behind who we are. And so we know if it's us or if it's not, and we, we literally have gotten rid of it. Interesting. We, we, yeah, we have gone through because we were like, if everything in our firm is not depictive of where we're going. We don't want it here. It shouldn't be here. 
That's funny because I've only ever heard two designers say that before you today. And I interviewed earlier today um, Beth Titolo and Carolina Gentry from Pope Design Studio. And so as real time, our listeners are that their show is up and your show is after theirs. OK, so. Okay, yeah. But the thing is. Now, I'm not suggesting that no other designer that I've spoken to hasn't done this, but it, coincidentally, it's the second time that it's been told to me, and it's only the second time it's ever been told to me in two years. And that is, they said the same thing, is that when we select a fabric or something for our client's home, it may be great for the client, but if it doesn't blend with our aesthetic, then it's not that we don't make something terrific for our client, but we say, okay, back to the drawing board, find something else that is both representative and terrific for that client, but for us as well. And it, I, it's it, interesting. It is. A hundred, yeah. And that, that thing, because we do, we focus, I mean, our main focus, I tell people over and over again, our favorite color is texture. I mean, it's just over <laughs> and over and over again. So our, our studio is filled with so much texture and all of those kind of things. And so, and that's what we're pulling. That's where we're at. And for us, it's, it's getting those timeless pieces, but making them textural and beautiful and layered and, you know, focusing on the architectural elements and things like that. That is really our aesthetic. And we will pound that every day of the week. I mean, that's just what we, what we think, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's really uh, so. pretty remarkable that it's happening in real time right now, as we're talking this transformation of your company. Did you, was it necessary, Kristen, for you to do rebranding on your logo or things like that, or those things were in line and you didn't have to do that as well? Did you redo a website? Did you, any of that sort yeah, of external? Our, our Definitely our website. We definitely um, updated our whole website. And then another thing that we did is, so we focused on, on what our brand is. And this brand is, it's called K-Tom. Okay. And there's, this is a very big list of, of what that is. But it goes back to our philosophy and, you know, how we design and things like that. I mean, I could tell you the whole list of it, what it all is. But it's so for us, this K-Tom is and 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 it's not me it's not Kristen Thomas and and I know that's like what everybody thinks always oh, that Kristen Thomas but mm -hmm. it's really not and I'm not I'm not going to get emotional again because a lot of <laughs> I'll that, bet you are though <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, but, but the whole the whole reason that um I do design in the first place and even did it it was because of my dad mm -hmm. and uh, my dad passed away 17 years ago wow and um and his name was Carl and it was started with a K. Oh. And so the K is, is definitely him. And so on <laughs> November 15th of this year, that's when, that's the um, day my dad passed away. Oh. And that's when we will launch K Tom. Oh, okay. Okay. And so it's, um, so anyway, the, the whole aesthetic and all those kind of things is something that we've built over time. And I've thought a lot about as far as what we want on that and, um, yeah, it's just. It's and so, just, do you mean that you will you know? change the name of the company to K Tom from Studio mm -hmm. Thomas, or it's no, a brand it's, within it's, it? It's a. It's, it's just a brand within it. It's more of our lifestyle. It's more of our muse. It's more of like our philosophy. Mm -hmm. So you've got Studio Thomas. That's kind of like our, you know, our design lab. That's where we're doing all of our work. But K Tom is more of like it's a. It's just like a philosophy. It's like the it's like we this is why we do these things a certain way and this is why we layer things a certain way. And so when we meet with a client, we're telling them what what a K Tom is and what how you are in you like things that are timeless and layered and this and that and it's almost like this muse that we're forming is what it is. And and how is it expressed on the site? Is it expressed as as blog posts or inspiration? It's expressed as in, inspiration pictures. I'm looking at it. Well, it actually hasn't come out. So in November, we will have products more, and that will be based more on like intentional living, and you know. Those oh, so it's going to be a shop, pretty much. Yeah, but very small. I mean, we're right. starting very small, uh -huh. and but we definitely have a certain color palette and certain. Um, elements that we're bringing in. So we're, we're building this brand. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. You're doing a great job. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah. It's definitely, 
um, it, we're, we're super, super excited about it. And so, you know, we just, we just barely, um, put together like our KTOM, um, tags for all of our pillows and, and things like that. So we're, we're in the works of it and, um, we just want to form, you know, products in a lifestyle that's just, it's timeless, it's classic, it's luxurious. A lot of our clients, they, they love, you know, the really nice fabrics. They don't need a ton of it, but they want things that are nice and beautiful in their home. And, and it, it, it goes back with the philosophy, um, you know, from the essentialism, less but better. Mm. And we always want our clients to get less items, but let's get you some really nice stuff that you can be really proud of. Okay. Um, so yeah. now I have to just ask you that. So now that you've done this and you've done this re it's almost an internal rebranding. You've decided it internally, is. right? Okay. So you've come mm -hmm. you've you really just said that's it. When you are how are you vetting the client? How are you making certain before you get involved with the client that the client is going to be on board with what you just said? Let's get you less but make it better if you I'm assuming what you mean in there too is you know I would rather give you a beautiful quality made sofa and we leave off something as opposed to getting you five I don't know you know what I'm saying is that any what is that what you're doing or, yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. I don't I don't want to get him a lot of trinkets or anything like that I it just we yeah we're we're very selective of what we'll put in people's homes so yeah we the I think what we do is when we're interviewing a client, we really do tell them about our philosophy and we tell them how we approach their home and the way that we're thinking. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, we'll have some clients will come to us and like, oh, well, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to change it in a few years anyway. And we're like, well, let's think for a second. Like, mm -hmm. I want you to really think about that for a minute. If you really want to change this in five years, let's think about what's the, what, what's that going to cost you and this mm -hmm. and that and all those kind of things. So for us, we're, um, we really want to teach them those things. And we're like, let's get some nice things for you that you can really be proud of. And that, you know, you can change things throughout your home, you know, in due time, but let's get those really great foundation pieces and let's get your aesthetic and get your lifestyle intact so when you go out and you're at the store and you find a lamp, you're thinking, that's totally me. I'm getting that because I know it works for me. Mm. So we're really, we really want to teach our clients. I mean, it's more of, it's more than just putting together a room. It's like, this is how we see you. You have so much of this and this and this in it. And this is why we're putting your home together in this way for you. Okay. Okay. And then do you have conversations where someone will just push you back and say, no, 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 no. I just want you to design the house. And then you have to just say, I'm not the designer for you. Yeah. But that doesn't happen very often because okay. when we, if we're able to talk with them and tell them our thought process, um, and just say, you know, our, our goal is, is to do the very, very best we can. We care about you. We want only the best for you. You need to trust us. Give us your trust. They give us their trust. Huh. Huh. Every time, every single time. I've never had a client, because I, for me, I, I tell my clients all the time, I care about your house more than you care about your house. I know that's hard <laughs> to think. I know that probably isn't. But truly, I want what is best for you. I mm -hmm. want you to be so incredibly happy. I want you to love your family. I want you to form those memories. And I want to be an instrument of making that happen for you. Mm. You just you just are so truly convinced of it and live it and breathe it at your core that it's comes through and it's just somebody either hears it and resonates it with it or not. And I yep. can see that, you know, that's how that would be. You know, it's not like you're like, you're not pretending it. You're not saying, oh, I really love your house more than you. Like, just give me your money. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, that, and, that, and that, it's not, it's not even like a money, it's not a money thing. Cause for me, I, I think it's like when you go, when you go and you talk to a doctor I've, I've, I've gone to several different doctors. If you go to a talk to a doctor and you feel like you're just a number to them, right? Right. You, you don't feel that, but when they have that emotional connection and they really want to take care of you and they care about you, you're mm. like, you know what, what, what can I do? Cause I trust you. I That's know right. you're going to take care of me. We're the same way. When we talk to a client, we are going to take care of you. Mm. We are going to stand behind our stuff. We are going to make 
for sure that your home looks incredible and we care about you. We want you to be happy. Like this is our goal for you to be happy. You know, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. So that's, that's, that's really, I mean, and like I say, we really look at them and we, um, you know, part of the, part of the reason the, the whole K-Tom philosophy, my dad was, my dad made everybody feel special. Mm. He made everybody feel that they were incredible. So for us, we want every one of our clients to feel incredible. We want to lift them in, in the way that we speak to them and the way that we care about them and the way that we're putting their home together. We want to elevate them because we care about them. It's incredible. Your dad would be so darn proud of you. You're exactly like him, clearly. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Thank I mean, you. it's, uh, I can just imagine this environment there with all of you ladies there. And your husband is there and he's running the operations now. What is he doing? Yes, he, so, so Scott is, you know, he went to law school, so he's extremely, extremely detailed. Um, <laughs> and he, so he's, uh, you know, he's, he's making sure that we've got money in our account. He's making <laughs> sure that, you know, all the operations and everything are running smoothly. And, um, and he came on, he, he really came on board in December. I went to him in tears and I just said, Scott, I help. need your help. help. I can't do this anymore. It's growing, right? It's growing mm -hmm. and it's, and it needs somebody to be the steward of it because you're mm -hmm. so busy doing these other things. Somebody does need to, to manage that yeah. side of it. And yes. I, and I've got my bookkeeper and I've got my right. gal that does my expediting and I've got my gal that does purchasing, but I needed somebody to have the eyes yes. on where we sat financially. I just couldn't do it anymore. No, I, I agree. And that's so smart of you that you recognized it and looked out for help. And for you, you're lucky, you know, that it's your husband. In my case, it's the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I feel very lucky. Yes. Because uh, I trust him. You right. Know, that's 100%. it. Right. Yeah. That, that's the thing. It's like there's, yeah. you know, there's no double checking them. <laughs> no. Yeah, you know, you know you, I mean, it's his money too, right? Right. Like, exactly. He wants to make sure. So it's like, yeah, he wants, he wants the very best as well. And exactly. yeah, he's. And it's good because he's, he's definitely, and I, it was great because all of the girls were so excited when he came on board and they were just excited because they knew he right. was really going to take that and run with it. And, mm -hmm. and he's, he's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So. You know, I, I don't know if you heard the show with Shay McGee and Sid McGee and he does I that did. for yes. them. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So it, it's very, it's great when you have that together. And you know, if you don't have it, you've got to find it. You, you either, you have, it has to, there has to be something that will give. You will either figure out a way to take on a business partner that you trust, or you will figure out a way to pay for, uh, uh, you know, the, a, uh, not a, a coach that teaches teaches you how to do things, but maybe a different level of somebody that mentors and really checks in with you every single month or whatever it is, or you have to elevate people in your firm to do more of the design and the client facing stuff so that you do that. It's whatever yeah. works for you, but you can't not do it. You can't get busy, yeah. start to grow and not keep the reins on the the business and the money because then you are really are a hamster in a wheel, whether you're a happy hamster or not. If you have no idea if you're profitable, you're still a hamster. I promise you. Yeah, you are. And, and I, and I, obviously the, the, you know, the vision and things like that, that's what can start your business. But if you don't have systems and processes in place, your company will fail. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. So, well, it will, it will be impossible to grow. That's the it, thing. Yeah. You can be one mm -hmm. person and do everything every which way, willy nilly every day of the week and somehow pull it off. I, you know, you can, you actually can yeah. do that. It's not enjoyable. It's not sustainable for year after year after year after year. Um, but you can do it. But if you yeah. expect and want to grow, or even if you have no desire to grow beyond you, if you do do and set your systems and you do things systematically, your day just becomes and your well, life becomes yeah, nicer. You, you, yeah, exactly. You don't you don't continue to age twenty years every, every three years. You know, I always tell people, I'm like, man, I am just. I think I aged at least four years. You know, so the stress is it's enough to truth. kill you. It's the truth. So, it's very and you difficult. Need that. You know how stressful it is. Yes. You know. Yep. It's the truth. So yeah. if there's a sweet spot in there in managing it and and creating your vision and and following your dream and creating your dream at the same time and but knowing that you're grounded and that you've got your both feet on the floor and you've got your eyeballs straight ahead, not looking down and sideways, pretending that 
that's something that is isn't right yeah no I, I think that's I think you just stay true to who you are and what you believe and you just keep you just keep doing it you know yeah. nobody's gonna tell you which way to do it left right or whatever you have to go with your gut and you have to go with what you know to be true mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well you are one inspirational lady Kristen thank you so much oh you are so sweet <laughs> I I really appreciate it thank you so much for having me and I just thank you so much again yeah no problem I'm glad you spent the time with us today thanks thank you Hearing this episode again, I was struck by how committed Kristen was and still is to being true to herself in all areas of her business and her life, right? We've had the discussion on the show countless times about niching down. It's always scary at first. The idea, especially when you're a newer designer or in this case, Kristen, you know, she turned away when she was up and running, right? It's, it's frightening. You think in the beginning that you have to say yes to everything, and sometimes, at first, this is very true. But we've had several guests on the show over and over say exactly what Kristen was saying in this episode. When she got clear on who she was and what she wanted her firm to represent, it only brought more business her way. When you are able to say no to the wrong work, it opens the door for the right work. I know it's hard to have faith in that, but you don't actually have to have faith in it blindly. We've had dozens of designers tell you that it's true. Okay, so have faith in your colleagues, right? Listening back again to this show, I was also reminded of Phoebe Oldry. She was back episode number 606. Phoebe specializes in biophilic design, and the idea of closing herself off to a very specific niche terrified her at first, but it was what she was passionate about, and she believed so strongly in it that she knew she had to plunge forward. And then the same thing happened to her. It didn't close off business. It opened it up. Okay, so if this episode resonated with you, go back and check out Phoebe's episode, okay? And I want to be clear, we're not just talking about niches here, right? Yes, niching down does tend to open up doors for people, right? It also, though, sets you apart. It gives you a direction for marketing, and it creates clarity for those around you that the ones that are attracted to it are like, hey, I want some more of that. Okay, so but even if you're not ready to niche, you need to take the time to find the clarity on what you do represent, on what you bring to the table and what you want out of dream clients. Create the avatar of that dream client. Find your Fred Burns only. Find out what you do best. Get quiet with yourself. Figure it out. And then find out how to position yourself in a way that aligns with who you are and what you want for your business. It's all about being authentic and intentional. You want to be able to be intentional in your business, in the way you show up, in the way you work, in, and in what you offer your clients. When you get this clarity, everything else falls into, space, into place, all right? And I also just want to emphasize, again, how strong Kristen's motivation was. You can hear it in her voice, okay? How hard she worked, how dedicated she was, and how fiercely she showed up for her own business, right? Remember what she said? Failure was not an option. I believed her. Did you? Right? Now, there's no doubt that putting your back against the wall is a strong motivator. We've seen that too time and time again. When you just have to succeed, you absolutely must find a way to do it. We've seen plenty of guests also the other way that they plan their visit, business, uh, the opening of their design business, and they plan their exit from their day jobs with careful precision, right? Cheryl Luckett comes to mind. And this approach has served her very well. Her career is definitely one to be admired and emulated. Um, this, this, this is Dwell by Cheryl. So if you're not familiar with her, I can't imagine that you're not, but Dwell by Cheryl, okay? This precise approach may work best for you, all right? In fact, I did a recent column for AD Pro. I hope that you subscribe to AD Pro. 
so much great information every single month in, in the um, uh, magazine, right? And I wrote exactly on this. I talked about the two different paths that Cheryl Luckett of Dwell by Cheryl and Nate Berkus took to their full-time design career. Nate was like Kristen. He dove in, he put his feet to the fire, and he made it happen. He was like, I need to make as much as I made in my paycheck last week. That's all I need to do. I need to pay my bills. And if I make that, I'm done. Okay. Um, Where Cheryl did plan. Both are valid approaches, personal to each person. It confirms what we say here all the time. Do you be you, right? So however you decide to approach your business, however careful or thoughtful you are, you still need to create that fiery mindset. Okay. Don't let failure be an option for you. Don't mistake one for one second that the person who's carefully planning does not have that fire and passion. That goes without saying, especially when you see the rise in a career like Cheryl's in such a short time and Kristen's in such a short time, you know, comparatively speaking, right? So you have to figure out your motivation, figure out your determination, push yourself in a way that works for you toward the success that you envision for yourself. That's really the bottom line, okay? So I hope you enjoyed listening to Kristen's story again today. And if it was new for you, I'm glad that, and you know, that I picked it to bring it and put it in front of you. I hope that you got great value out of it. I hope that you got motivated out of it. Um, I am just grateful that you show up and listen to the shows each week. I want to tell you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for doing exactly that. Loving having this relationship with you. So thank you again. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.